Hello and welcome to another Scratch tutorial. So today we're going to be making a simple uh, top-down scrolling game. Um, and all this will be is um, scrolling background as well as sp uh, sprites that, ca that you can put anywhere that you want that will scroll with the background. So let's start by deleting our cat. So for some for some reason, every time I start recording, it um, deselects the page, which is kind of weird. But okay, so let's let's start by making um, a little character. As always, don't just do what I'm doing. Um, make something that actually looks good. Um, and let's have it go to the center, which is zero, zero. Um, all right. So, um, that's, um, on, all we have to do now is on flag and looks go to front. Um, the, and then now let's make a background. Yeah, that we're already at that point. Um, so, um, Let's fill it, um, maybe a grassy color. And then let's change, uh, let's add a little bit of dirt. Or maybe, yeah. Let's just, let's make it nice and small and just make scribbles all over it. This is not going to look good. I'm just doing this to demonstrate um, how it moves, and you can see that's what it'll look like. And then make one more costume. Zoom in as far as you can. Um, make this vector. Um, now, make a tiny dot in the center, then select it. And make it smaller. And now it's invisible. Okay, you can kind of see it right there. See it? Okay. Um, so now, the way Scratch determines what size something can be, um, I've mentioned this in other videos, but how much drawing is on this costume allows it to be a certain size. But then if you switch the costume to something like this with it completely filled in, it allows this to be whatever the max size for this is or whatever size you decide to set it to. So we can go ahead and say on flag, um, switch costume to costume two, which is the one that's very, very small. Then set size to however big we want it, let's say 750%, and then switch costume to costume one and go to back layer, um, just so it layers below our sprite one, which is our player. Um, So now you see it's pretty big. Uh, I can't really drag it around, but um, so it's pretty big. You can make it bigger. Um, I can make it very big. Um, at this point, you can't really see how how big this is. So let's go back down to maybe one thousand. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty big. So now. Um, Let's get a repeat forever function. Um, actually, let's do this separately um, on flag. Um, let's also start by having it go to the center. Um, so on flag, go to zero, zero, and then um, then if key pressed, we'll have it move. Um, then um, let's just have it um, um, and uh, let's just have it move 10. That's really fast, but um, and then um, when when normally we would say if up arrow press move 10, we want it to move negative 10 because this is the character that's moving up. So this will be moving down relative to the character, if that makes sense. Um, 
So um, if we duplicate this, um, left arrow will be positive, right arrow will be negative, and we want to use change x by 10 and change, uh, change x by negative 10. Um, so now you'll see moves around in the background um, and we can travel all the way to the edge. Um, warning, uh, it doesn't go all the way down. Um, so um, another thing we want to add in here um, is scroll X and scroll Y variables. Scroll Y. Oops, scroll. <laughs> scroll. Okay. Then you want to set scroll X and scroll Y to X and Y. X position and Y position. And just stick that into one of the functions underneath the if statement. So now we have these. So um, now, um, since this has been kind of short so far, um, I'm going to add just um, some sprites you can put in the background. Um, so these sprites will you can put them in different you you put them in a place and then they scroll with the background. So let's make a new sprite. Let's make it contrast with the background. It's just black circle maybe. And then um on flag, repeat forever. Now get a go to X, Y, um, and then say, um, um, then um, get two subtraction things, and then add minus scroll X and minus scroll Y. Then you put your X and Y positions you want it to go to. So let's say 100, 100, uh, you'll see it shows up there. Whoops. Okay. Um, since we have this reversed, um, we want it to actually be plus. Um, I sometimes do it the other way where it's your player's X position and Y position relative to the background. So then you get something that scrolls. However, you see how it kind of drifts. We can fix this by, um, instead of these, um, ma make the, these all happen on a message. And all, make them all individual. Um, and then um, broadcast message one, um, and then broadcast message two, okay, okay, broadcast message one, then broadcast two. Actually, we want to do two first, um, and then when I receive two, it still has a problem. So, um, I'll flip them and see if that works. And see there, then it, then it looks nice. Um, so what it does is it makes all of these all of this move first, and then um, um, something that'll make it better is broadcast two and wait. So then it might slow it down a little bit, but then it has to wait to move 
for the next thing. So now it's nice and smooth. And also it layers below the sp sprite one. Um, and so that's how you'll want to make sprites that move. Um, and then you can put their interactions in a repeat forever function like, um, or, or you could actually put it over here. Um, like if it's touching sprite three, then it will hide if it's like a hole or something or like get darker. So if touching sprite three, then, then, then it could be like, kind of like this, so like, it gets a little darker if you're in the hole or something, uh, just an idea. Um, then you'll notice this, how it just shows up at the top. Um, so, what we want to do is just, if touching edge, then it will hide, um, or what you can do is, um, Actually, this is a better idea. Um, get an if statement. Sorry, I just thought of something that will work better. Um, get an or. And then get, and then um, not this or this. So if it, if You want to put these, um, if not that or that. Uh, so if not, uh, I keep saying that, I'm so sorry. Um, if the X position it's supposed to be that does not equal its X position or its Y position it's supposed to be at, does not equal its Y position, which is just scratch limiting where it can be, um, like it can't go off screen, then it will hide. Uh, and also we have to get an else. Whoops. Uh, so if else, as a side note, I'm not going to edit this out because then people don't make the same mistake as me. And then I just show kind of how I think. Um, so then we can have it so that if it move, so if it moves off screen, see it's partially off screen now. Um, What is its current X position? And what is this? Oh, right. Um, um, so Scratch's logic system is messed up. Um, in Scratch 2.0, this works, but this worked, but okay, instead say if not this or this. So then we get this. So now, yeah, now it hides when it reaches the edge and we can go just barely to the edge and then it hides. Um, so then that's how you can have uh, scrolling things. Um, uh, what I suggest adding is maybe different like interactive things, maybe walls that you can't walk through, rocks, randomly generated land, something like that. But that's all for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.